service. Um, the next item is Sunday ministration, and it's going to be taken by no other than the youth president, youth fellowship president, Dame Ladi Adewara. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Youths in the house, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are in youths and you are glad to be in the house, rise to your feet. For those young at heart as well, rise to your feet. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. I believe we all know that we are children of God. So in front of God, we are all youths. So I want us to shout a big hallelujah to the King of Kings. One, two, three, go! You may have your seats. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome us once again to the finale of the youth convention 2023 let's put our hands together for jesus the last time we had this convention was in 2019 that was four years ago and i'm so glad and excited to be here once again i'm so glad and so happy to see each and every one of us here hale and earthy it's only by God's grace. Four years ago, 2019 was the last edition of this youth convention, and we are here once again. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I'd like to show sincere appreciation to the church authority and to God for giving me the opportunity to stand here today. I'd like to appreciate the youth ministry and my wonderful coordinators, Pastor Shino and Spunke. We love you so much. Thank you for everything. Hallelujah. Father, we say thank you. Oh Lord, I adore your name. We glorify your name. You said in your word that the entrance of your words give us light and understanding to the simple. Oh Lord, as we go into your word this morning, we ask that you shine your light upon our lives. Father, have your way. Let your will be done. Speak through me, Father. As I speak now, oh Lord, decrease the flesh and increase yourself for me. Take control, oh Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, I've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I don't know if anyone knows the theme of our convention this year. Um, it's currently on the screen. Can we all um, shout it out together? One, One two, three, go. One, two, three. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be taking this topic. And the Bible text is taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. So I'll be reading from um, NIV, because I really, really like this version. And it says, that do you not realize that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? So run in such a way as to get the prize. In NLT, that particular verse says, so run to win. Can we all say that once again? Run to... Hallelujah. Thank you so much. So it's very important. Um, we know that in the life of a man, right, the second you are born, the second you get into the earth, right, your race begins. The second you are born, the second you drop, um, you come out of your mother's womb, right, your race begins. So we need to come to the understanding, for those that do not know yet, that you are currently running your race. And there are different um, segments of the particular race. Let's use um, the track event as an example, right? Um, for every race, there are some things that you know that are standard, right? For a race, you have your racetrack, you have your path, you have your runners as well. 
So as the Bible verse says, right, it says everyone runs. So it tells you that on this race of life, you are not the only person running. There are other people running with you as well. So it's very important to note that in this race, you are not alone. But I want us to have it at the front of our minds now, the front of our hearts, not at the back, that this race is a personal race. This race is a personal race. And it is important for us to win this race. The Bible has charged us, Paul in this verse has charged us that we should run to win. Run to get the price. Another, verse, another um, Bible translation will tell you, run that so you may obtain it. So he tells us that at this race as it begins, there is a finish line. You know, I mentioned that you have um, the runners, you have the track, that's the path, and there's also a finish line as well. So it is important for us to have these things at the back of our minds. So I'll be taking us through the keys to winning the race. I'll call them my own keys to winning the race. I know today there are a lot of um, writings out there, a lot of people have talked about running to win, and there are so many um, explanations, so many philosophies on what, um, on how you should run, on how you should win, or certain keys that you should have in order for you to win. So, for you to win, you must have a clear goal. Where am I going? Where am I headed? What exactly do I want to achieve on this race? And it's also very important in um, setting the clear goal, that is setting your objectives, what do you aim to achieve, that you are also in alignment with God. Alignment with God is very important in our journeys to win in the race of life. And we can also see this in the book of Proverbs 16, verse 3. It tells us that we should commit to the Lord whatever we do, and it will what? Establish our plans. So in order for you to run to win, you must first have a clear goal. Where exactly am I going? What do I aim to achieve? And for you to write your goal as well, you must also be in alignment with God. God, what exactly have you brought me to do? In this race that I am on, what exactly do you want me to do? Align with God. It is very important that we are aligned with God in order for us to achieve our goal. Hallelujah. If you are following me, praise God. All right. So I'm still talking about the fact that you need to set a clear goal. If we look at the New King James Version, it talks about that they run to obtain a perishable crown. Everyone else runs to obtain a perishable crown, but we run for an imperishable crown. In other verses, you, um, translation, they will tell you they run for a corruptible crown. Why we run for an incorruptible crown? So what exactly is this imperishable crown? What exactly in the, in the Bible, what does the Bible refer to as the imperishable crown? From our common knowledge, we have an idea that things that are perishable are things that spoil, right? Things that rot in. Perishable foods are things like your tomatoes, um, your pepper, and things like that. So you know that things that are perishable are things that, you know, spoil, they rot in, they fade away, they do not last. So when the, the, um, the inverse, when they say something is imperishable, it means what? That thing lasts. It stays long. It is durable. It lasts, in most cases, it lasts forever. So in this particular verse, the imperishable crown refers to the victory of eternal salvation. That is the imperishable crown. That is the plan God has for us on this race on earth. For us to go, to run, to win, and to achieve that imperishable crown. The imperishable crown also entails you as a person living a successful life and making heaven. That is the clear goal that God has established for mankind, for believers, for Christians to achieve in this journey of life. If you are with me, praise God. So I talk about the first thing, right? A clear goal. So another important thing for you to have 
for you to know, for you to have at the, for at the front of your mind, as I said, is that you need to be determined and disciplined. Determination and discipline is very, very important and expedient in this journey of our lives, in this race. When we talk about um, fuel trucks, right, who is the first runner that comes to your mind? Can we, can we all chorus it? Usain Bolt, right? So Usain Bolt, if you've listened to his story, if you've read his story, um, I read about his story and it, something struck me. He said that he trained for four years to run for nine seconds. He trained for four years. Do you know what it means to run for nine seconds? If I tell people to count for nine seconds now, it's like, I mean, something, one, two, three, four, five, like nine seconds. That is a world record he has set since 2009 and it has not been broken till date, 13 years ago. And he is successful. We all refer him today. Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt. I'm sure a lot of us, if I ask who won the last um, race in the Olympics, we will not remember. But we can remember Usain Bolt for the level of determination, for the level of discipline that he has been able to put his body through. He has been able to establish in his life, in his career, in his personal journey, for him to be able to achieve that particular goal of making that record that even years after, a decade after, it has still not been broken. Someone say, be determined. Someone say, be determined. Someone say, be disciplined. Hallelujah. So it is very important that we are determined. Determination is a strong commitment to achieving a goal. So you can see that when you have a particular goal, a clear goal, right, the next thing that should follow is the determination and your discipline. So I also want to write this down. Determination helps you start the race. But do you know what will keep you? Discipline. Determination will help you start. Yes, I am determined that for this particular goal that I've written down, I want to achieve. It is what I set out to achieve. But if you are not disciplined, if you do not discipline your body, if you are not disciplined enough, I can tell you that that goal that you think you want to achieve might not be reachable. Praise God. Praise God. Another important thing for us to note, a key, that I will call it a key as well, for you to run to win, are obstacles and challenges. Obstacles and challenges. We know, or a lot of people know, that there will, um, there will be challenges on this particular race for you to win, right? But at the same time, I think as believers, we are, we've, a lot of people are currently in this, permit me to use the word delusion, where we feel like um, the, everything is supposed to be easy, right? We know that um, everything is supposed to work out the way things are supposed to work out. I believe in God. I go to church. I do this. I do that. But no. But no. The Bible tells us, what does Jesus tell us in the Bible in John 16, verse 33? It says that in this world, there will be trials and tribulations, but there is a but there. What does the but say? That be of good cheer, because what? I have overcome the world for you. Do we understand? So we are not called to a life of, of enjoyment. We are not called to a life of flexing. Permit me to use that word. In this life, in our race, in our journeys, there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be certain spiritual battles and challenges that we are going to face. As a young person, as an old person, there are certain things, certain um, hurdles that you will face at certain points in your life that you must actually overcome in order for you to move to the next level in your life. As a child, right, you go from your, um, your kindergarten, you go to your nursery school, you go to primary school, you go to um, secondary school, you know, you are going through different, different stages. You've heard of certain people who did not, um, you know, did not make it in a particular class and they are told to repeat, right, because they were not qualified enough for them to move into the next stage of their lives. So until you overcome those obstacles, you will not be able to fully say that you have won the race. So I hope you are following me. So the first point is to what? Have a clear goal. Second is to be determined and disciplined. 
And the third is to know that there will be challenges. There will be obstacles in your journeys. And certain spiritual obstacles that we might face on these particular journeys, what are they? Um, disencouragement, doubt, temptations, the flesh, your past. Your past can be a major obstacle to you winning the race. Maybe you've gone through something in the past, you've um, gone through certain challenges or some things, maybe you're, um, where you were coming from, you continue to look back. How many of us have seen when people run in a race and as the person is running, the person is looking back? Does it happen? Osibot says that when he runs, he acts like are, um, the other racers are like monsters behind him and he's running for his life. So when you are running from monsters, do you look at the monster? Or you keep, you are focused on that particular goal and you keep running towards it. So it's very important for us to be focused, especially in the face of challenges. I want to challenge the church today that let us be firm in the face of challenges. These challenges will come. These obstacles will come. But let us be strong in the face of challenges. Tap your partner and say, be strong. Say, be strong. be strong. Hallelujah. So there are several people in the Bible that we have seen that went through certain challenges, certain obstacles, before they are able to achieve, before they were able to win in this race of life. Joseph faced obstacles. Moses faced insecurity and reluctance. David faced the obstacle who? Goliath. Job faced severe trials and tribulation. He literally faced the devil in his own journey. Job's own case, that one, the challenge is raised to power. I don't even know. It's, <laughs> it was a lot. He went through a lot. But what, at the end of their story, there is what, something to take out. That despite the challenges, despite the hurdles, despite whatever you might be going through, I want you to know today that there is a story coming out of that. There's a glory coming out of that story. So let us continue to know this, the Christian journey is not one of easiness. It's not one of, like I've said, flexing and all of that. So let's have to remember that there will be challenges, there will be obstacles, but we should be of good cheer because we have what? Because we have what? Hallelujah. So another important or integral aspect we should also have behind of our mind, a key to us winning this race, is that you need support. Supporters. Have you ever walked into um, a track event and you do not see any supporters? Have you ever watched the Olympics or the Commonwealth Games and there are no supporters in the stadium? You've not, you enter, you watch and there, are no, there is nobody cheering in the stands, everything is just blank, everything is just there, and they run, and it never happens. I know there was a time during the COVID, right, in some sports, fans were not allowed to enter into the stadiums, into the um, stadium for football to watch the match. Um, I think for those that watch wrestling as well, people were not allowed to come into the, um, the arenas to watch the match. But at a point, we could see that they noticed that the morale of these people was very low. It wasn't as how they used to fight. If, um, who, is the, who is the wrestler, the wrestler now? Like, maybe like John Cena was throwing three punches or four punches at when fans were in the house. You see him maybe throwing just one. Their morales were low. And what did they do? They were able to um, innovate and put LED screens around the arena for people to be able to connect and watch and cheer them up. So what does that tell you? That in this journey of life, that you need support. Who are those in your corner? Who are the people in your corner? What is your support system? In this time today, people my age, like the youths, I'm talking to the youths right now, we, we are overly independent. We try to be overly independent. You might be going through a certain issue. The house will be born in that and you will sit down in that house. And instead of you calling somebody, ah, please, you help me put out this fire, you will not see anything. We will still be inside that house, and that house will be burning. But it's true. 
We always think we are able to, you know, maneuver our way around things. But that fire that, that has been burning, if you were able to call someone's attention to it, they will help you put it out quickly. But it's now when it has now gone to, like, overboard, when things are now almost irredeemable, that's when you now run to one person, eh, sir, eh, this, that. So, they will tell, the question they will ask you is, when this thing was happening at the inception, I was here, but did you come to me? So please, I'm charging myself and the youth in the house. Let's not be overly independent. I know the way the world is today, we want to, you know, at 21, I want to be out of my mother's house, my parents' house. I want to have my own car. I want to, you know, do certain things. I want to be able to um, stand on my own. Yes, there'll be a time for you to stand on your own. There's a time for you that your parents will sit you down and say, Alpha, <laughs> right? Alpha, oh, you don't de- pay for my house. What's the plan? What are you doing? <laughs> so there will be a time for that. Let's not rush the process. Let's not rush the process. Who are those in your corner? What is your support system? Every one of us needs support. Yes, Usain Bolt is on that track, he's running. But do you know that there are over 50 hands at that is back pushing him to run? But you can't see them. As he's running, he's thinking about the people he cannot let down. The people who have sponsored him, the sponsors, the big money sponsors, um, his family, his children, a lot of things. Even the fans that are even in the stadium cheering them on. That's why you see that when um, certain footballs, um, clubs, they lose matches, you see them going to appreciate the fans. Because without them, there will be, there will be no motivation for them to move forward. Somebody says support. It is important that you have a support system to help you, to uphold you, to guide you whenever you are in need. How can you be running a race, a, a race of your life, and you are falling and there's nobody to hold you, to push you back up? That is why it is important to have a mentor. So I want us to know that there is support available for us. As young people, as old people as well, there is support. There is support around us. But we need to come to the understanding. We need to be able to open our eyes and properly utilize them. A lot of us... um, we take things for levity, right? Um, we, we have this support, but we feel like these are people I see every day. What do they want to add to me? Do you understand? That's why there are a lot of periods or a lot of times that you hear scenarios whereby, permit me to use this example, certain maybe members have been in a particular church for a long time and they've not been able to tap into their particular, you know, their answers. But you see someone new that just comes maybe like, a month or maybe two weeks or anything, and he's able to get his, you know, his miracle on the spot. So it is very, very important that we do not take things for granted. There, are, there is support around us. The church as a body is there to support you. For the youth, the youth coordinators are there to support you. The church elders and pastors are also there which comes back to what I initially started with, that because we see these people every day, because I see Pastor Folaji every day, because I see Pastor Yoda every day, this, what does, does, does he have to offer me? But also, permit me to also, you know, diverge in a way, that even to the people we see as our support systems, are they even, like, really, are they available to our church elders, to our pastors, are you approachable? Are you willing to give this support when people come to you? Because you know, a lot of times it might feel like um, this person is not approachable, this person frowns a lot, and all of, all of that. But it's also important that we, we are able to accommodate, um, especially now even to the youth, we are able to bring them closer to you and also offer support for them. So under this, there's also a need for mentorship. To our parents, beyond parents, there's a need to mentor your children. 
mentor your children. If you don't mentor them, they will seek for mentorship outside. And as parents, this, your, 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 chil- your, as parents, your children should come to you for mentorship. They should not be having mentors outside the house. If you are a parent and your child is not looking up to you as a mentor or even as a role model, there is a problem. You should be the first barrier or the first place of support that your child comes to. Your child has a problem, but instead of coming to you, he's going to other people outside for support. Parents, please mentor your children. Hallelujah. And also, the grace of God is very important in our race. 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, what does it tell us? That my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect. The grace of God is readily available for us. His grace sanctifies, it justifies and empowers us. Let someone say grace. 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 The grace of God is available for each and every one of us. May the grace of God rest upon our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. To conclude... It's important for us to know once again that this race is personal. Our race is personal. At the end of your life, God is not going to hold your parents. He's not going to hold your father or your mother accountable for whichever way you've run your race. Your race is personal and personal to you alone. I was telling some of you this morning that when um, you work, right, when you do a particular work for God, the reward, it was the, some people were saying that, oh, um, they are doing the work already. All of us will benefit from it. I don't agree. I feel like when you do certain things for God, if I mob this entire auditorium, I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for myself. The reward will come to you. The Bible says that we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So it is very important for you to have it at the front of your mind, not the back this time, that your race is personal. And I also want to conclude, and I also want to say that the race is not complete without fulfillment. Fulfillment is very, very important. Quickly to the book of um, 2 Timothy 4, verse 8. We can see Paul saying there, what did he say? I have fought the good fight. I have finished my race. He has fought the good fight. He has finished his race. And guess what? He was still alive. So it's important to know that it's not only where you die that your race ends. You can be alive and your race will end and you are fulfilled. Look at the case of Miles Monroe. What did Miles Monroe, t- 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 what was his story? He said he had written all the books. He had preached everything he used to preach. And he's what? Ready to die. And he was alive at that point. And guess what? I think the next three months or two months, his plane crashed and he was gone. Are you telling me at that point that he's not going to make heaven? He's fulfilled at that point. Let's someone say fulfillment. Amen. Fulfillment, we need to know, is not happiness. But fulfillment is joy that you have lived a successful life serving the purpose of God. That is what fulfillment is. So it is important that in this race of our life that we, have, we are fulfilled. Be fulfilled in your race. Be fulfilled in your journey. In your educational race, in your personal race, in your career race, and in your spiritual race, it is important that we are fulfilled for us to obtain what? The imperishable crown. And I pray that we are fulfilled in our journeys in the mighty name of Jesus. And I also want to ask a very quick question as I conclude. And um, it's not to rile anyone up, but if you get a uh, administration for today, that in the next three hours, you are going to die. What exactly comes to your mind? In the next three hours, you are going to die. What comes to your mind? I know there are several answers. Hope you know that your village in Ekiti is, is more than three hours away, so you cannot run there. So I, I know there are several answers, but I can tell you in that moment that nothing else matters. Nothing at that point will give you satisfaction. Nothing will give you. Ask your riches, your wealth for satisfaction, but it will not give you. Ask your car for satisfaction, it will not give you. Ask your wealth, everything you've amassed. They will tell you that it is only success I have for you, but I do not have peace for you. That's why someone says, borrow 
the wisdom of a dying man. What does a dying man look for? He looks for peace. And this peace is made available to each and every one of us. If you have been blessed this morning, I want you to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. So I just want us to just make a short prayer. This is not a hard prayer for us to shout or anything. This is a very, very solemn prayer. That I want us to just pray internally. We ask that Father, Father, give me the grace to run and win. Prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.